France 98, the World Cup brought to you by Westpac. Qantas, Toyota, Optus, McDonald's, and Sony Stamina Handicam. Welcome back to Paris. The big game coming up, Croatia versus Germany. We'll be crossing live very soon to the Stade Gerlon in Lyon with Andy Harper. A few final observations. Who are the key players? Well, the key players, obviously, for the, for the Germans are up front where Klinsmann and, and Bierhoff have rescued them. Certainly the two of the last three games, they've come from behind and largely thanks to the predatory instincts of those two. But uh, they've been unsettled in midfield, the Germans, and will need some answers to that problem. The, they've adhered quite stringently, the Germans, actually, to all the stereotypes that are afforded to them. They've been cold and ruthless, mechanical, and they've survived against all odds. Uh, to which the Croatians believe they have the tactical key to undo them. One wonders, though, how, how quite to plot against someone's psyche rather than their physical abilities, because yeah. that's the, the biggest thing going for the Germans. They're, they're quite irrepressible in their attitude and their ability to come back from nowhere. Thanks for that wrap-up, Andy Harper. We'll take the national anthems, then join our commentator, Gary Bloom. in a bad-tempered game. Now in the quarter-finals of France 98, Croatia seek revenge. Germany have a settled attack and a settled defence. Jürgen Kohler returns after injury, but in midfield, Germany shuffle their pack again for the fifth time in this World Cup. Jens Jeremies is recalled in place of Thomas Helmer, and once again, there is no place for the gifted, if erratic, Andy Muller. Croatia's coach had to decide whether to recall Zvonimir Soldo, who's available again after suspension. Soldo returns for the player who so successfully deputised for him in the last game against Romania, Igor Stimats, retains his place, and Kronoslav Jurcic is a player who drops out. Lugin Klinsmann and Zvonimir Berman, the two respective captains. Our match official comes from Norway. Two years ago, it was a Swedish referee who caused a good deal of ill feeling between the two countries when he produced ten yellow cards and one red one in Manchester 
in the Euro 96 quarter-final. One hopes for a more sedate game of football today. So Jucic, number 21, is a player who has to drop out of the starting 11. Tudor, number 15, is going to Serie A to play in Italy next season. And there's no place for Prozinecki, one of the more gifted players in the Croatian squad. Well, now turned disappointed to be left out. Similar story for Helmer. And no doubt Andy Muller there, who will decide his future at club level after the World Cup is terminated. V for victory, I assume. My goodness, the Germans know one or two things about winning in World Cups. Andy Kopke had a very uncertain game in the last match against Mexico. His opposite number is Drazen Lalic, who plays his club football for Croatia Zagreb. Bertie Vokes taking charge of his 100th game today as coach, and he pins his faith in Lothar Mateus, the sweeper for Germany playing in his 128th international. Sanovic was a player who won the all-important penalty for Croatia in the last game against Romania. Thomas Hessler will drive Germany forward from midfield and supply the likes of Jürgen Klinsmann and Oliver Bierhoff. Those painting the faces in town today were having a risk trade. And it was mainly Croatians in the city centre today. Davo Šuka, the man whose penalty took Croatia through to this quarter-final. Oliver Bierhoff, who's scored three headed goals so far in this World Cup Finals. All is set and ready. It's the World Cup rook rookies, Croatia in blue against the World Cup Masters, Germany. The Germans bidding for their 10th World Cup semi-final. The prize for today's winners, a trip to Paris on Wednesday to meet the host France in the Stade de France in the last four. Germany in possession, playing from left to right in this first half. Here's Hessler. Hessler's cross. And it's dealt with very effectively indeed by the Croatian defence. Jörg Heinrich was coming in at the back post and almost a scare inside the opening 30 seconds there for Croatia. Robert Jani guards the post and it's a corner kick here to Germany, which Hessler will take and bend his right boot around this ball. Came off Bilic. Ladic, I think, was being impeded by Oliver Bierhoff, number 20. And Croatia have their first significant touch of the ball. I think Bierhoff was just backing into the goalkeeper. The enemy's in midfield, picking out Hessler with that well-timed header. Stanic got his foot to the ball to deny Tarnat the sort of space he would have required to initiate a German attack. <laughs> Germany had the throw. -in. Remember Croatia appearing in their first World Cup finals. And they are absolutely delighted beyond all measure to have made it to the quarter-finals of the competition. Vlaovic gives chase, Kopka with that high hoisted ball, which catches Klinsmann offside, free kick to Croatia. Jani. Free kick there to Germany, with the push by Robert Jani. Just a slight one, but he certainly made contact with Jörg Heinrich. I think it's fair to say this isn't just a football match for Croatia, it's a significant moment in their history and a good deal of national pride being sanded off from the terraces. 
exactly eight years ago that the Croatian Football Federation was reformed when the country split from Yugoslavia and to have gone further in the competition than Yugoslavia really is something that Croatia are very, very proud of indeed. Klinsmann. Tarnat was never going to get that ball. This is Slaven Bilic. He once played in Germany and is actually fluent in the language. Vlavic. And Hamann was caught very late there by Devil Shuka. And I think Devil Shuka is slightly fortunate not to be shown a yellow card. Heinrich, who's joined the attack. Ladic on the end of it. Six of Germany's eight goals have come from crosses or corners so far at France 98, so expect more of the same in this match. Actually, Bertie Vokes was saying in between the uh, last game against Mexico and this one that he feels his side have to vary things slightly. We can't always rely on the strength and height of Oliver Bierhoff and Jürgen Klinsmann. This is Yami. Stimatz. Given away rather cheaply to York Heinrich. Hessler's making a break here. The enemies. Soldo. Bermen. Bilic driving forward here for Croatia. Trying to pick up Devil Shuka. Cleared though by Heinrich once again. Boban giving the way to Hamann. And this is Luta Mateus. This one aimed in towards Bierhoff. Trying to pick out Klinsmann. And there was a push there by Klinsmann. Not that he entirely agrees with the decision of the referee. Good header by Bierhoff trying to pick out his striking partner. Well, it could have gone either way, couldn't it? But uh, Klinsmann clearly was pulling the jersey there of Slaven Bilic. Jeremy is beaten in the air. No foul on Devil Shuka. Rather nervy opening five minutes to the game. So much at stake. Hessler. Foul by Stanic. Free kick to Germany. Stanic, number 13, has had a touch of the Romanian hairstyles, hasn't he? Deciding to dye his hair blonde the last week. At least his teammates haven't followed suit, as was the case with Romania. Heinrich has gone forward. Kolder's forward two here for Germany. They've had six minutes of the game and it's still goalless. This is Michael Tarnett. Remember, Germany's so dangerous on these dead ball situations. Bierhoff tries to get round the back and Stimatz Heads it all out of play for a corner kick. Stimatz, who said rather immodestly that he thought he had a great game against Romania and wanted to keep his place as sweeper in the team, and his coach, Miroslav Blasevich, agreed with him. Stanich marking Klinsmann. Hessler with a corner. Beaten away by Ladic. A rather wild effort on goal by Michael Tarnat. It was Tarnat's free kick that Sinisi Mihailovic deflected into his own net in the game against Yugoslavia. I read a newspaper interview with Svonimir Boban this morning and he was saying that uh, he was comparing the mentality of the Croatian team to that of Yugoslavia. He said if Croatia had been two up against the Germans, 
And have gone for a third goal. Remember, Yugoslavia actually led Germany 2-0 in one of the group games. And Germany fought back to make it 2-2 by the final whistle. Ladic gives it away to Hessler. Good idea. Good execution, too, by Thomas Hessler. Wasn't the best kick out by Vlasen Ladic. And Hessler on the volley. Drove the ball wide. Ladic knows he has to be a bit more accurate with those kicks. Soldo flicks it on. Christian Verns. Keola. Looking for Hessler. Bilic is the back marker. They did well to keep the ball in play. Under pressure here from Hessler. Picks out Vlaovic. Stenic. Hasanovic. Vlaovic again. Germany have got a lot of players behind the ball now. Stenic. That's superbly done. Almost came all the way through to Robert Jani. And Stimats now mops up here for Croatia. Trying to pick out Jani. Cut out by Lota Mateus. Shukas won it back, though. Still level Shuka. Germany know they're going to have to play better than they did against Mexico to overcome Croatia. Remember, Germany were a goal down in that game. And just one or two signs of nerves in the German defence. Asanovic kept in play, but Kopka will claim it. This is Andy Kopka. Blame for Yugoslavia's second goal in the game in Lens, which ended 2-2. It wasn't that convincing, to be honest, against Mexico either. Bilic. Jersey Tug. A little bit of a debate going on. This sees Ornamir Boban as a number 10 shaved into the back of his head and then painted red. Taking a huge run up to this free kick. Maybe he's been watching too many videos of Roberto Carlos. They were seriously threatened Ladic's goal. And Ladic almost disdainfully watched the ball fly into the crowd. Good interception there by Jörg Heinrich. This is Christian Verns, rather. Verns with the cross, looking for Bierhoff. The enemies. Hamann, the enemies again. Bierhoff. And that's a tackle from behind. I think it was Simic, the player, who was the guilty party then. That's his first yellow card 
certainly since the start of round two, so that's not going to mean him missing a possible semi-final. But he gives Germany a free kick, and Thomas Hessler really is the free kick expert of the team. Here he comes. Well, they're getting closer, I suppose. Tarnat wallop the ball over the top. Hessler goes a bit closer, but not that much closer. Obviously, Stanich must have said something, because it was clearly Simic who followed through, and he gave away the free kick, but Stanich must have uttered the two sad comments to the referee. Simic, Yami. Hesanovic. Stanich. Stanich almost won the ball back of Christian Verbs there. Burns just seems to be uh, limping slightly. We've almost had a quarter of an hour of the game. Another goalkeeper has been drawn into the action significantly. It's going to be that sort of game, and it could go on uh, for quite a while. We could well go on past the 90-minute mark tonight. The enemies. Mateus. The enemies. Shuka. Won back by Christian Verns. Esler. Rolled in towards Bierhoff. He was looking for a spot kick. Bilic. And the danger has passed. But there was real danger there when Bierhoff got the ball with his back to goal and was just waiting for any connection. Non came. There was no free kick awarded either. Hessler with the throw here for Germany. Still nil-nil. That's a corner. Simic, the player who got the ball out of harm's way, but there's more pressure down on the goal defended by Razan Ladic. And once again, it'll be an outswinging corner to be taken by Thomas Hessler. Hessler again. For Klinsman, Sanovic surrounded by white shirts. Well, he was fouled by Thomas Hessler. A little slight contact there from the boot of Hessler, but it's not anything dangerous. We have already established Simic has been shown one yellow card. Stimats with a free kick. Foul by Hanan. This is today the fourth meeting of the teams. Still. Croatia seek their first victory over the Germans. Boban. Stimats. Trying to pick out Stenic. There's a Mexican wave making its way around the stadium. Always a bit of a giveaway that the game isn't living up to its expectations. Klinsmann's given the ball away. Yani. Burns lost out. Yani, that is a tackle from behind. I thought they were meant to show red cards for those. Jörg Heinrich becomes the first German player to be cautioned. FIFA quite clearly laid down 
prior to the World Cup that a tackle from behind is punishable by solely red card. We've had 18 minutes of the match in this World Cup quarter-final in Lyon. Germany nil, Croatia nil. Free kick here to Croatia, which Boban will take. It was a good free kick as well. The defensive wall had to do its job. Heinrich Hamann. And Hamann was being balked then. still hasn't had a save to make of any note. Keola. This is Michael Tarnett, who will play for Fiorentina next season in Italy. Man. Tarnat. The enemies. Well, there was never the space for the cross. Didn't deflect him in his purpose of trying to put a ball over into the Croatian penalty area, and Asanovic got in the way. All these corner kicks being bent away from goal. Another one to be taken by Thomas Hessler. Finsman the inevitable target. Tarnat. Vlaovic tries to break here. There, Ben. I think the uh, referee's assistant might have got that wrong because although the two Croatian players were offside, they both tried to retreat. Very tight indeed. Lavic and Shuka both deemed offside, whether they were offside or not. Mateus. Tarnat. Four years ago, Germany went out of the World Cup at the quarter-final stage, beaten by Bulgaria. Will they fall here against Croatia? The enemies, Kola, Hamann. Heinrich, turned on by Klinsmann, and then Matthäus. Heinrich again, and that's a free kick. Robert Yarni is the player doing the pushing. Referee's assistant had a very good view of that indeed. This is a good spell of pressure here for Germany. Can they translate it into a goal? This is Hessler. Oh, they almost do. goes desperately close to the opening goal of the match. Nobody had picked up Hamann, they were too worried about Oliver Bierhoff. And Kopka knows it was that close. It's still nil-nil, and we've reached the midway point of the first half. Good turn by Shuka. Jörg Heinrich. Matthäus. Trying to pick out Thomas Hessler here. Terrific control by Hessler. Bierhoff's in there. 
And Ladic had to make the save. That ball was whipped in at pace, and it was a good stop by Ladic. Simic. Šuka. Soldo. Vlaovic now for Croatia. Still Vlaovic. And there was some pushing by Goran Vlaovic, which results in a German free kick. It was either pushing or handball. It might have even been both. Germans did look unsettled when Vlaovic moved into top gear. Filic. Senovic. Croatia still holding their own at the moment. The longer the game goes on, Germany are beginning to see more and more of the ball in midfield. But this is Devo Schuka. Skips past a couple of tackles. Schuka, Boban. It will ricochet here to Yami. Four players wait for the cross. Very clear by Kula. Rare mistake by Thomas Hessler. Yoni with a throw in for Croatia. Boban. The enemies. Hessler. Rare opportunity here for Croatia to put some blue shirts into that German penalty area. Bilic goes forward. Jani with a free kick. It's a poor free kick, to be honest. Hamam gets it clear. Picked up by Stimats. Tries to pick out Jani. coach has urged caution to his side they don't want to drive forward and concede a goal but here's Stanich now Stanich is round one tackle and Croatia have the corner Bilic is cross took a deflection rare break for the Croatian defence here because they really have been up against it in the last five minutes or so but now it's Croatia's turn to attack and their fans are loving it Soldo being very heavily pleased corner then to Croatia Stanic looking for the ball there was some pushing going on inside the uh, penalty area and Bilic might have got himself into trouble here Stiemats and Heinrich who incurred the referee's wrath. It was quite a tussle, wasn't it? Not sure what that was, but it wasn't football. More like WWF wrestling. We head to the half-hour mark in this very tense and nervous game. This is Bierhoff attacking the ball.
Mateus. I think Germany's fans would want them to play the sort of open attacking football which is perhaps better down for Brazil, from Brazil, but Bertie Vokes, the coach, has said we can't pretend that we are Brazil, we have to play the way we know. And the hard work ethic of the German side has been there for many years, seems in evidence once again. They seem a team of diligent artisans rather than craftsmen. Verns. Hessler looking for Klinsmann. Away by Billich. Hessler with the throw. Looking for Bierhoff. Away by Stanich. Boban. Croatia really need to try and get players into the German half quicker when they do break. This is Stanich. Lavic makes a run here, it's cut out by Kula. Hessler. Klinsmann. Stanic again gets the ball out. When Croatia won the ball inside their own half of the field and tried to break at pace, they were at such a numerical disadvantage that their attack was bound to fail. Germany just sat three players round Goran Vlaovic and when the ball inevitably came it really was easy for Germany not a serious attempt on goal then in half an hour of football You get the impression that in footballing terms this could be a war of attrition. And who knows, it could go all the way to sudden death or even penalties. Mateus. Heinrich. Bierhoff! And Lanik scoops the ball away. First real sign of excitement we've had, to be honest. And it's an almost inevitable source. Jeremy's now. Jeremy's for Germany. Should get look how deep Croatia sitting. Esla. Lavic is the intended target, but once again, hopelessly outnumbered by white-shirted defenders. And Germany can start to build another attack. Hamann, Jeremies. Heinrich. Teus. Burns, Hamann, here's that terrific header by Bierhoff, Ladic happy to get the ball to safety. Bierhoff. Stanich, Boban, cleverly done. Yanni. Might be got the ball out of play. Boban. Senovic. 
Oh, we are seeing one or two shots on goal. Yeah, nothing that would seriously trouble Andy Kopka, but Soldo helping it forward and inevitably Devo Shuka's offside. Shuka could be in trouble here for kicking the ball away. Claiming he didn't hear the referee's whistle, but I'm sure he could have spotted the referee's assistance flag. Germany have managed to score twice in each of the games they've played so far at France 98. They're just beginning to show one or two signs finding the opening goal. That super header by Bierhoff, but you do sit back and wonder whether you're watching the world champions of 98. Probably seems likely at the moment when you've witnessed the likes of Brazil and Holland and Fantastic football played throughout the World Cup. Germany's football so far is very workmanlike. I'm sure France will feel as they watch this game they could have the beating of either of these two sides. Heinrich. Klinsmann. by Lota Mateus. You'd better watch his tone because he already has one yellow card. And the yellow and he'd miss the semi-final should Germany go through. Yanni. Never again needed a goal, it's this one, because whilst it remains nil-nil, both sides are happy to put plenty of players in defence. Be not particularly ambitious when it comes to going forward. Hammond. Stimet seemed to get the worst of that, even though he and committed the foul. Another tackle from behind. I'm sure FIFA must be uh, wondering what all the edicts about the red card for the tackle from behind has come to. Ten minutes to half-time, still nil-nil. Esler with a free kick. This will be aimed in towards Bierhoff and Klinsmann. Instead, it's Bilic who gets it clear. Jeremies wins the ball in midfield. And he's lost out. Now there could be trouble here for Germany. If Croatia can break quickly, that's an awful ball by Devo Šuka. Of all the options, that was the least effective. And it's Mateus who picks out Jeremies. Stanich claiming he's been fouled now. <laughs> Yellow card for Michael Tarnat. He will miss the semi-final should Germany go through. So Bertie Vokes is forced into at least one more midfield change. The next match, that is. He's used ten players in the five midfield positions available for Germany. The matches so far at France 98. And this is all getting a bit heated. Croatia claimed there was an elbow used then. And all the ill feeling between these two sides, which bubbled over at Euro 96 in Manchester seems to be coming to the fore again. Oh, look at that elbow used there by Bierhoff on Soldo. 
really, Bierhoff has no place on the field. When you bear in mind that David Beckham was dismissed for aiming a sort of flick at Diego Simeone, that was really nasty. That elbow there thrown by Bierhoff. The referee takes no action whatsoever. Free kick to Croatia. Seven minutes to half time. Vasanovic, not that close to be honest. Kopka hardly moved as the ball flew towards him. Mateus. Charnet. Jeremies. In towards Hessler. Takes on Stimats. It's a lovely turn by Hessler. He ran into the challenge of Stanich. And still no sign of the opening goal of the match. With half time fast approaching. Bierhoff. Mateus. Shuka. Oh, goodness me. Verne's hopelessly late then. What colour will the card be? It's red. He's off. Christian Verns has been sent off. And he misses the rest of the tournament, no matter what happens to Germany. It was a dreadful challenge on Devil Schuka. I'm pretty certain Verns is going to get a two-match ban for that. Such is the severity of the foul. So, not only Germany would be without Michael Tarnat, who's suspended, they'll be without Christian Verns as well for the semi-finals should they go through. But what an opportunity here for Croatia. Remember, it was Croatia who had a player sent off when these sides met in Manchester two years ago in Euro 96. Now the roles have been reversed. And number two, Christian Verns. Disappears to the dressing room in tears. I wonder if Germany's hopes are disappearing with him. Croatia will never have a better opportunity of progressing in a World Cup, surely. Boban. Vlaovic. Stanic with a cross. Devil Shuka. And he's shot wide. But suddenly Croatia have a self-belief given to them by the fact they're playing against ten men. The crowd have got behind him. The Croatian fans urging their side on now, and suddenly the team have raised their game by a gear or two. Vlavic close to making contact with that shot by Schuka. I think Germany will be relieved to hear the half-time whistle so they can regroup and think again about their tactical plans for the second half. Jeremies. Heinrich. Away by Bilic. Boban.
Evo Shuker offside. Jens Jeremies. And the German players who are so proud of their work ethic and devotion to the cause will have to work that extra bit harder now to cover for the man missing. Hamann. Klinsmann. And Bielf again with his elbows raised this time on Bilic. Germany had better be careful because the last thing they can afford here is to have another player sent off especially a player as important to them as Oliver Bierhoff. We've just moved into the final minute of the first half. Boban. Corner. Oh, this is a great opportunity for Croatia. The Germans are rattled. And Sanovic with a corner kick here for Croatia. And Sanovic again. Away by Jurgen Kola. Vlaovic with a shot. Three minutes of stoppage time to be added on from now. This was always going to be a tight game. And proved to be so, to be honest. That's Bidic helping the ball back. But that sending off by Verns, just as David Beckham sending off affected that game between England and Argentina, I think will be the defining moment in this football match. Bertie Vokes on the touchline is going through absolute agony. Will it be another quarter-final disappointment for Germany, just as it was four years ago against Bulgaria in New York? Jeremy's to the fore here for Germany. He wanted too long on the ball, it's been taken off him by Soldo, and this is Jani now. Foul by Lota Mateus. Zvonimir Burban. Yami. Three to aim at. This is Vlaovic. Trying to pick out Soldo. This is Shuka. Almost came through to Stanic. And this is Bierhoff. Stanic now for Croatia in stoppage time at the end of the first half. The enemy's pinched the ball and they've picked out Oliver Bierhoff here. The enemies. Bierhoff. Mateus. Bilic, Stanic, about 30 seconds of stoppage time left, Stanic now. Yanni, Yanni with a shot, what a goal! Robin Yanni for Croatia! <laughs> Germany backed off and backed off. And Robert Yarni has scored the opening goal of the game deep into 
stoppage time at the end of the first half. Would you believe this is his first international goal? Well, what a drive. Angled wide of Andy Kopka. And Croatia can dream about the semi-finals of the World Cup. Only a match of seconds left now. First half about to come to an end. And what a tempestuous ending to the first half. First, Christian Verne sent off. And then as Croatia flooded forward, Robert Yarni here struck an absolute gem to give Devil Shuka hope and his teammates hope that Croatia in their first World Cup can go to the last four. Bertie Volks has some work to do at a half-time as he talks to his troops. The half-time score from the Stadio Lom is Germany nil, Croatia won. Characters created in this TV show, even those based on real people, hey, are entirely fictional. I'm going down to South, I'm gonna have myself a time. <laughs> Friendly faces everywhere. You talking to me? Then it's just gonna be on the air. Going down to South Park, yeah. Leave my woes behind. South Park. I did it! I did it! I finally killed something. Coming very soon. It's happy! It's sad! <laughs> Maybe it's the classic style. <laughs> Maybe it's the 30 years of outstanding quality. Maybe it's because it's built in Australia. Whatever, one thing's for sure. People are happier with a Corolla. So, get a Corolla, get happy. To celebrate the World Cup, you can score a great airfare to Frankfurt with Qantas from $1,765 return for travel October 1 to November 15. So hop into your licensed or after travel agent or call Qantas now. Go to McDonald's now to play McMatch and win Monopoly. Just peel back the label, match the properties and you can win some amazing prizes. One of eight fantastic new Land Rover Freelanders, so you can escape for some serious fun. Or one of 30 Air New Zealand family holidays, including 15 to Disneyland. So for your chance to win a big prize, fly into McDonald's today. <laughs> Could have filmed for longer on a Sony stamina handycam. It's a Sony. Far-reaching. We might have to turn into an earlier lecture. The 
consequences profound. Dealt with a very raw deal by politicians. There is a plot. Welcome to Insight. Welcome to Dateline. A plot to inform you. Welcome back to Paris. It's half time in the final quarter final match of France 98. The score, believe it or not, is Croatia 1, Germany 0. And Germany have had Andy, a man sent off. What does Miroslav Blazevic tell his troops to do? The temptation must be to sit on the one goal lead, but we know Germany can and do come from behind often. What does the, uh, Blazevic say? Well, hope, hopefully change things completely because they've been sitting on a no-goal lead for the first 46 minutes of the game. Um, there was nothing coming from either side. Certainly from Croatia's point of view, it would be uh, seemingly tempting fate to just invite the Germans to come back because if anyone is going to, even with a man less, uh, the Germans are the side to do that. I mean, let's face it, most of the sides who have uh, played against 10 men haven't done particularly well. But uh, looking for highlights in this first half was rather difficult. In fact, probably easier finding a solution to third world debt. <laughs> and Hassler popped up with the first couple, a poor kick out by the Croatian keeper and Hassler with good instinct, but uh, not quite the execution that he would have liked. We Hassler, said, Hassler again from a free yeah, kick. Sorry Andy, we Hassler. said pre-game that there was some personal animosity between these teams. Many of these players, I think up to eight on the Croatian side, played at Old Trafford in that Euro 96 game. There was a header there from, from Bierhoff, I think it Harman. was. Harman. Yeah, Harman. Harman. Yeah. Thanks Andy. But obviously that was obvious. A lot of petty fouls, yep. a lot of aggravation in this first half. Well, that's been uh, getting under my skin most, more than anything. Uh, before the game, I, uh, it's a great save, a good double save there. Klinsman sniffing around, as all good strikers should do, and a good header from Bierhoff. Probably the outstanding moment of the half until Robert Yarney popped up in injury time. But uh, that's annoyed me. I was sort of hoping that there wasn't going to be much niggle in this game. And it, it's not that the players are emotional about what's going on. I blame the referee. Uh, Bierhoff, very lucky not to get March for this yeah. because we've seen players go for far yeah. less. We'll get a replay of this elbow. Absolutely. On, on what we've seen in the tournament so far, this was a red card. That was a blatant elbow. The only defence for the referee is that he didn't see it. But uh, look, to me, the referee's job, first and foremost, is to ensure the safety of the players. Once that has been... Uh, Here's the send-off. That's a bad tackle. He had to go. No doubt about that whatsoever. That was. And the Germans protested. I don't know why. Yeah. That was a potential career-ending tackle. Well, above I mean, the knee. It was rash. You can have yeah. no, no complaints. If the referees were more consistent, probably Christian Werns wouldn't have been dragged into that. But that's uh, unforgivable. And, and, and the referee, I think, has got a lot to answer for. Apart from, as I was saying, ensuring the safety of players, he must make sure that football can be played. And, and what a great strike. Just in time to wake us up for the half-time talk. Yeah. And... Uh, Football isn't being allowed to play because the game is just being punctuated by a litany of, of petty fouls and if the referee is to stamp down early on such offences, late nicks from behind, shirt pulling etc, I hate to say it, use a couple of yellow cards, the players stop doing it, we might get some football but that was hard yakka watching that first half. That was uh, Yanni's first international goal, what a, what a time to score, what a Excellent place time. with all the Croatian fans behind and that goal. And a beautiful goal. goal at that too, yeah. struck it beautifully. Yeah. Having said that, I, I do think the key now for the second half must be Yanni and Stanich, the wide players. We saw uh, Argentina trying to play against the 10 men of England, they kept going through the middle and it's easier to defend through that middle channel. Are there signs, Andy, that Yarni and, and Stanis have got it in them to get forward, stretch the Germans and then punish them? Yeah, I think so. Out of the gloom of the first half, a couple of Stanich's uh, contributions were quite impressive. I think he's got a lot to offer down the right-hand side. And also the battle between Yarni and Heinrich down the other side of the field has been one of the few things yeah. to come out of the first half. So certainly Cro Croatia will get a lot of mileage out of the flanks if they choose to use them. They've got the players in the middle to get the ball out there in Asanovic and Boban and the player in the middle to finish it off in uh, Davos Shuka. So we ho certainly hope for that type of football. But uh, the Germans are going to be very good at spoiling things. I mean, there's no better tactic in the world and implementing the tactics in the Germans. I think in Jeremy's they've got a very industrious midfielder, possibly without a lot of uh, polish to his game, but certainly gets through a lot of miles and, and he'll be doing, have to do twice as much as yeah. he normally would to help the German cause. At, at some stage I get the feeling Germany will go man on man at the back and almost dare Croatia to come forward. They'll try and make up for their numerical uh, inferiority by saying, okay, we won't play with a sweep. I wouldn't be surprised if if Lota Mateus ends up playing in front of his, his defenders rather than behind them and they'll almost dare the Croatians to say you come and play and see if you can beat us and if they do that I think they can beat them if they sit I've got a feeling that the aerial superiority of Klinsmann and Bierhoff 
eventually will pay dividends. Well, I, I agree to a certain extent. I think as the game goes on, possibly Mateus, if he stays on the field, will continue uh, to push a little bit further forward, but not from the start. Because the way Germany have played throughout the tournament has, has virtually bypassed the middle, uh, the midfield. rather. It's been very Norway-esque in the way they've played. And they've got a great target, man. I mean, there's a few better in the air than Oliver Bierhoff. Yeah. So why worry about the extra man you don't know? have in midfield and bypass it, try and hit the big man on the head and get some crumbs off him. I'm sure it'll be route one stuff from Germany and just try and hold the Croatians out if the Croatians come into the second half to play. OK Andy, fascinating stuff. We'll be back with some more analysis of this big game. Croatia leading Germany 1-0 in the quarter-final of France 98. You're watching the 16th World Championship of Football. All characters created in this TV show, even those based on real people, hey, are entirely fictional. I'm going down south, I'm gonna have myself a time. <laughs> Friendly faces everywhere. You talking to me? I'm gonna be on TV. I'm gonna be on TV. When is this gonna be on the air? Going down south, fuck yeah. Leave my wolves behind. South Park. I did it! I did it! I finally killed something! Coming very soon. If you're an Optus pre-selected business customer, we're giving you a world of choice on your peak and off-peak international calls. You can choose to take a 20% discount on your standard international long-distance calls to every country on Earth. Or you can choose to have a 35% discount to our 20 most popular business destinations. Or get a massive 45% discount off our standard rates to one of our top seven business destinations. To get these discounts, call 1-800-500-001. Yes! Brilliant! Filming my first parachute jump! Excellent! Let's do it! Geronimo! Yeah! Oh no! The battery is running low! Where to put the spare battery? Ah, in you go! Too late! Don't let this happen to you. Get a Sony Stamina Handicam with the super long battery life. Look for the Stamina range of Handicams. It's a Sony! I believe that if you really go out and do exactly what you want to do, you find happiness. If you can do what you love, that's incredible. Anybody that says that one person can't make a difference is wrong. days in the new army reserve and you'll end up with a lot more than tax-free pay and an ongoing part-time job call 13 1902 hurry applications close soon the new army reserve the edge Welcome back to Paris. It's just after 10 p.m. local time here. The night has fallen. Will the curtain fall, Andy, on Germany's World Cup aspirations? Well, it's going to fall on one of them, and uh, yeah. if, the, if the, they can't turn it around, obviously they'll be the ones going, the Germans, in 45 minutes. But you'd still hold out a lot of hope on them, uh, for them, just on the sheer basis of their reputation and history. We could take a look at some statistics which prove our point that this was not a game full of football. It was full of fighting and shirt pulling and 26 minutes and 20 seconds of effective play. We believe, and we'll have to check this one out, that that is the lowest amount of football in any one half we've seen, which is an indictment on both teams. And uh, also with the free kicks, I mean, to my recollection, and again, I'll stand corrected on this, but the most, uh, the game littered with the most fouls was Japan, Argentina in the first round, and that was 34 for the total match. Here we've got 26 in the first half, which sort of bears out what we were saying before. And uh, you know, the referee, I, I believe, has a lot to do with that because he didn't stamp down hard enough uh, early on and then we go down the list and the, and the result of such a match is, is four shots on goal which is very generous because a couple of them were powder puff efforts. Yeah. Well. That really is the key to the, the, uh, the, the story so far, the lack of commitment to football and I wonder now whether we'll see a continuation. As you say, if the ref had applied the rule on the tackle from behind and the shirt pulling vigorously early on, 
He might have blown his whistle ten times in the first five minutes, but after that, everyone would have got the idea. Yeah, and, and the, the other fact of the matter is there is a semi-final stake at birth here, so uh, we hope both teams really go for it in the second half, as they, their football lives depend on it. Croatia have got one hand on the place already, uh, on the position in that, in, in that uh, semi-final, as it were. And uh, we certainly wish them well. Congratulations so far. They've got a lot of work to do yet. But both these sides are doing nothing uh, in representing their half of the draw, if you like, because on the other half of the, the knockout draw, we've had goals, drama, excitement, fantastic football. And uh, it's been met on stuff on this half. And, and we hope for a, a turnaround, certainly. These are live pictures from the Stade Verlon in Lyon. The moment, a very festive mood among the Croatian supporters. This is their first World Cup. What a fairy tale story for them mm. to even get this far yeah. and to go in at half time on the verge of history, being ready to take a place in the semi finals. Yeah, well, a small nation numerically and, and uh, the struggle for secession, which went on for years and years, and they finally got their place in the sun, if you like. And remarkable to go into your first World Cup and be so close to a semi final. I mean, they're very proud people, the Croatians, uh, as we know certainly from first hand experience with our dealings with the Croatian community in Australia. I'm sure they're having a huge party at the moment. They're not far away from having an even bigger party in a few days' time, but they've got the most renowned t opponent uh, to, to thwart them in the shape of Germany. And as, and as ugly as the German football has been tonight, one can just never write them off. Of course, this is, as we said earlier, Bertie Vogt's 100th game in charge of Germany. He has won 66 of his previous 99 games, an awesome record. Overall, he has a 70% success rate, only 22 defeats over that period of Bertie Vogt's reign. So he is not accustomed to losing. The German psyche, as you alluded to before, Andy, is not accustomed to defeat. Let's see what transpires in the second half at the Stade Gerland. Let's go back to our commentator, Gary Bloom. Germany were two down against Yugoslavia in Lons and came back to draw 2-2. Two -two. They were one down against Mexico in Montpellier and won by two goals to one. And now they're a goal down and a man down against Croatia in this World Cup quarter-final. But if any team can come back from what appears to be an impossible situation, it's the Germans. Croatia restart the game, playing from left to right in this second half. Croatia were deeply hurt by German press reports saying that Germany would easily beat Croatia. All that now has been cast aside. And remember, it's only eight years since Croatia played their first ever international after their split from Yugoslavia, when they beat the USA 2-1 in that opening match. They've come a long, long way since then. They felt they learned a valuable lesson in Euro 96 when they were beaten by Germany. But now they're on the verge of something sensational. And here's Boban now for Croatia. Still Boban. Boban's through. Oh, he was denied there by the feet of German goalkeeper Andy Kopka. Another mistake now by Germany, and it could well be curtains for the European champions. Jeremy's Hessler. Cut out by Slaven Bilic. Seems to be a push there by Kola on Vlaovic. But it was Vlaovic who was clean through on goal. Jeremis. Jeremis with the cross, it's a dangerous one, Bilic. Mopping it nicely at the back there for Croatia, picks out Stanic. Boban. Jani the goal scorer. Hasanovic. Stanic. Stanic with this terrific run. This is Boban. Vlaovic will allow the ball run to run here for Devo Shuka. Shuka with a cross. Yanni again. Great chance there for Croatia. This time it falls for Boban. 
and as he stabbed the ball goalwards, it was always rising over Andy Kopka's crossbar. You do get the impression now that both sides mean business. Germany have to find an equaliser, have to shrug aside the disappointment of losing Christian Werns, who's been sent off, have to shrug aside the goal they've conceded, scored by Robert Jani, and have to attack Croatia at every opportunity. And they're doing that with Tarnat, who's got round Stanic. Stimac is next. Tarnat. Hessler picks it up. Three waves play on. It's picked up here by Luther Mateus. Hessler was the intended target of the cross. It didn't really come that way. Croatia are offside. And if the first half was as dull as a torch whose batteries need replacing this second half is as bright as an arc light now as both sides move into top gear and the determination of Jeremy's underlines the determination of the German team to find an equalising goal Stanic ran into Jeremy's Free kick goes Croatia's way. Quite simply, elimination at the quarter final stage of the competition isn't good enough for Germany. Davos Schuka. Jani's attacking the edge of the German penalty area, but uh, Hamann's there. Mateus. Jeremies. Tarnat. Bierhoff. Boben now for Croatia. Foul by Hamann. Hamann better watch his step. He's already sitting on one yellow card and he was all over Boben then. I think some of the refereeing has been inconstant, to say the least. Three yellow cards and a red one so far. Schuka offside. Free kick to, uh, to the Germans. Swedish official Heine Devil Schuka offside. I suspect that Germany might leave this another 10 minutes and then might make a change if they haven't found an equaliser I would expect somebody like uh, Ulf Kirsten to come on for them perhaps even Andy Muller no sign of any substitutes ready just yet for Germany but that isn't too long away I'm sure Tarnat Yenemis Played in towards little Thomas Hessler. And Stanich rather unnecessarily then got the ball out for a corner. Stimatz was very close to the action. And really that's a gift for Germany, that corner kick, which Tarnat will take. Now this is where Germany is so dangerous, these dead ball situations. And their aerial threat. Kohler's come forward. Bierhoff's in there as well. So too is Jurgen Klinsmann. Klinsmann with a header. Bierhoff, what a save by Lanich. Germany claimed the ball's got over the line. It hasn't. What an unbelievable save by Lanich to deny Oliver Bierhoff another goal in France 98. Germany 
feel the ball cross the line. Here they come again. No foul. Croatia break at speed here with Slaven Bilic. Mateus claiming there was Shuka dive. It's a free kick to Croatia. This is this great opportunity for Bierhoff. The ball never crossed the line as uh, Lanic was unsure what to do about it. Great instinctive save there by Lanic to save Croatia. And here's the foul by Mateus on Devil Shuka, which resulted in the free kick, which is about to be taken now. Croatia have so many players forward here. Now the referee has spotted something in the midst of all the pushing and shoving. Well, really, it was uh, Devil Shuka who was player who was sinned against then. You do get the impression there's going to be more yellow cards, and who knows, even red ones in the remainder of this game. The gloves are well and truly off. Aman is the player who claims he was fouled. again Stimats Hessler rattles the ball out of play well if Germany are to walk out in the start of France next Sunday they know that this will have been their finest hour because they're going to have to produce something extraordinary here to beat the side coached by this man here, Miroslav Blasevich. And Germany, who've pulled off miraculous escapes so many times, have another one set for them here. Ulf Kirsten already warming up now for Germany, just out of your picture. Bierhoff is going to have some help up front. Germany needs something. Throw into Croatia. All those marginal decisions now going Croatia's way. Kola will need all his experience to try and steer Germany out of this mess. And remember there. A player short after Christian Verns was sent off towards the end of the first half. Bilic. Mateus. Stimats. Balls out of harm's way off York Heinrich. Stanich now for Croatia. Three to aim at. Oh, what a miss! Devil Shuka really should have scored. And he knows it. He can smile, but he won't be smiling if Germany come back and pinch this game, because this could have killed off Germany. And my mind goes back to the match involving Germany and Mexico when Mexico led by Goltenil and then really should have scored again through Luis Hernandez. Missed that opportunity and went on to lose the game by two goals to one. I wonder if the same fate will befall Croatia. Asanovic, Stanic. Shuka apparently shown a yellow card. And we cut out impeccably by Stimats. 
and kept in play as well, but only as far as Hammer. Free kick to Germany. Well, something Devil Schicker might have done. He might have been there kicking the ball away after he missed that very presentable opportunity. Now, can the Germans find an equaliser here? We're 12 minutes into the second half. Bierhoff. His aerial threat is certainly considerable. Something that Croatia will have to learn to live with there to find a way through into the last four of the World Cup. Remember this terrific Croatian run achieved without the likes of Alan Boksic and Igor Chitanovic too. It was sent home from the training camp just prior to the World Cup. Hessler now. Still Hessler. Corner kick to Germany. Germany look a different side now. All their anxieties and uncertainties of the first half seem to be cast aside. And they are going at full pelt, looking for an equaliser. Hessler with a corner. Oh, that's just too high by Tarnett. Not an easy attempt on goal by Tarnett. There was a ruck of players in front of him. And he lifted this opportunity only just over the top. We've hit the hour mark of the game. Germany a goal down to Croatia and a player down as well. going through Bertie Volk's mind. Yeremi's now for Germany. Jürgen Kohler. Ball had gone out of play. This is Goran Vlavic for Croatia. Sanovic. Mateus. Tarnat. It's going to be a corner. Tarnat prepares to take the corner kick as Germany throw players forward into the Croatian penalty area. There's still a goal down. Tarnat again. Bierhoff tries to win the ball. Hamann. Hessler. Klinsmann. Bierhoff, Bilic, get out by Mateus. Well, Croatia said that uh, if they lead the Germans, they'll attack them and try to find another goal. And to be honest, they've been as good as their word in the opening stages of the second half. Bertie Volks screaming at his team now. I've never seen Germany so animated and so fired up and pumped up for such an important game. What a turn there by Schuka. Trying to pick out Vlavic. Kohler should get there first for Germany. Mertes. Wait patiently for the cross. Mm -hmm. 
Mateus. Beerhoff, free kick. Soldo's tackle completely missed time. This one. You don't need a referee out there, you need a United Nations peacekeeping force. This quarter final is being bitterly contested. Looks like it's going to be torn out. It is Tarnat. Yeah, the whistle has gone. There's no offside because the referee's assistant didn't raise his flag. And German frustration begins to bubble up again. The truth of the matter is they trail by goal to nil, and Croatia still are heading towards the semi-finals of France 98. Davos Šuka. Yanemis with the mistimed challenge. Sanovic stands over the ball. Nicknamed the footballing professor. Well, certainly Croatia handing in a bit of a lesson here to Germany. Sanovic. Jani arriving at the back post. Foul by Jani on Thomas Hessler. Free kick to Germany. Only twice have Germany gone out of the World Cup at the quarter-final stages. That was four years ago, and all the way back in 1962. Hey. Mateus. Boban, who was crudely hacked in. Referee says, get on with the game. Stanich. Devil Shuka. Stanich again. Forceful tackle by Jeremy's, which upset Stenich. Two have made up, though. But Croatia have the corner. Stenich marked by Tarnat. Stenich! Away by Bierhoff in the end. Stimats. What a save by Andy Kopka to deny Zvonimir Burban. He really got hold of that and it was on target as well. Initially, Stanic had this, well, pinball effort, I suppose. But how about this for a shot from Boban? Boban thought he'd scored the goal to take Croatia through. Instead, it's a corner to be taken by Asanovic. Whistle's gone, free kick to Germany, and then quick into the game. Or quick to resume the game, I should say. 
Kohler, Hessler. Well, Luther Mateus has seen a fair few internationals in his time. And I wonder if he has ever seen as desperate a position as this for Germany. Klinsmann beaten by Simic. One kit out by Stematz. And here's Boban. Runs into Haman and was being manhandled, and then Boban throws an elbow. Referee chose to ignore it. Oh, Davos Shuka with a superb piece of skill. Sadly, couldn't stay on his feet to complete what would have been a marvellous attack. Free kick to Croatia. Going to be a substitution now for Germany. And it's Thomas Hessler coming off. And replaced by Ulf Kirsten. When Ulf Kirsten came on in the last game against Mexico, Germany scored almost instantly. Look at this turn here by Davos Schuka. Mateus now for Germany, who still seek an equalising goal. Ulf Kirsten. Asanovic now for Croatia. And Benic can break here for Croatia. Devil Shuka to his right. Oh, it's almost there. Flavic desperately close to another goal for Croatia. set his sights on goal and it was really a very wayward shot indeed Kirsten fouled by Simic 20 minutes separate Croatia and a place in the World Cup semi-finals Hamad To be honest, for the past 25 minutes, Germany have had a real go at Croatia. With limited resources. Because remember, they are down to 10 men. Asanovic. Manhandled by Jeremis, who wins the ball. Here is Elf Kirsten now for Germany. Corner. Keep it strong. Twenty-one here is Michael Tarnat. Can he pick out Glinsman or Beerhoff? Beerhoff with a header. Who got the final touch? It was a Croatian head, hence the throw into Germany. Kola. Beer half away by Soldo, and this is Boban. Trying to pick out Vlaovic. Haman. Yeremis. Beer half, there was a handball, I think, right underneath the referee's nose. And a free kick to Croatia. Simic. Soldo. 
Vlaovic. Jani now for Croatia. In towards Devor Shukan, headed out by Jurgen Kohler. Devor Shukan looks like he's really enjoying himself. And who can blame him? Simic, Afsanovic now for Croatia. Klinsmann didn't really get it clear. What a very good header indeed by Soldo to draw a full length save from Andy Gotka. Plenty of power in the header. Comfortable height for Kopka. And they've brought a piece of Zagreb to Leon. And they're having one real party down in that corner of the ground. Mateus now for Germany. Bierhoff. Bierhoff's cross. Slavon Bilic. Haman wins it back. Away by Stanic. Asanovic now for Croatia, who tried to counter-attack here. Vlaovic, Soldo. Shuker on the right-hand side. Stanic, great tackle. Stanic comprehensively tackled then. Kohler across, using all his experience. Stanic with the throw. Vlaovic. Croatia now 15 minutes away from the World Cup semi-finals. Davor Šuka has Asanovic in support. Šuka again. Vlaovic wants the ball here. Davor Šuka. Boban. The look on his face sums up his frustration. Now Boban would love to score. is more or less ready to come on. Germany have some work to do before then. Great interception by Stenic. Vlavic here. Back to Stenic. If he can keep it in play. Just about. Stenic now for Croatia. Devo Šuka. And they're appealing for a penalty as Devo Šuka stumbled. Croatia have won it back though, not for long. This is Oliver Bierhoff for Germany. And that's a free kick given away by Slavon Bilic. Beerhoff getting inside, Bilic cutting into Beerhoff's shins.
Germany who have had some extraordinary escapes in international competition. Can they fashion another one here in Lyon? Once again, three players stand over the ball. This time it could be Hamann who will strike it in vengeance. Hamann. Oh, it's hit the outside of the upright. He was that close to the equaliser. It took a deflection. Lanicetti covered in fairness. It was never going to go in. Corner kick, though, to Germany. The World Cup is slipping away from them. And the header's wide, I think, by Beerhoff, who's been penalised anyway. That wouldn't have counted. That would have counted. There's fire in the eyes of Oliver Beerhoff as he looks to the substitution board which tells him Andy Muller's coming on and Dietmar Hamann is coming on. In fact, it's Olaf Marshall who's coming on. I thought it was Andy Muller who was coming on here for Germany. Olaf Marshall from Kaiserslautern. Down. Here come Croatia. Boban. Vlavic. Goran Vlavic wins it for Croatia. I think they're going to Paris now for the semi finals of the World Cup. story for Vlavic, the player who recovered from brain and a brain injury that threatened his life. Once again, Germany backed off, just as they did with Jani's goal. And Vlavic, once again, slammed the ball past Kopka, and surely now there's no way back for Germany. for Croatia. What a night for Goran Vlavic. Vlavic knows that he will be going to Paris. That giant electronic scoreboard on the far side of the ground Reads Germany nil, Croatia two. with the throw this is Bierhoff I think that goal by Vlavic broke a few hearts to be honest and Croatia now are going to take off 
their goal scorer and hero, Goran Vlaovic. And it's Silvio Maric who's coming on. But Vlaovic has made his contribution to this match. What a contribution. have come of age at international football what a day for the country what national pride will be celebrated in the streets of Zagreb as well as the streets of Lyon where so many Croatian fans many hundreds were unable to get tickets for the game but they're going to celebrate in the Cafes and bars, and there could be more trouble here for Germany. Manich and Devil Shuka can't score. I thought Devil Shuka was going to finish off what has been an extraordinary game of football. Maric, free kick to Croatia. The World Cup career of Lota Mateus is almost done. The final chapter is almost written. Svonimir Boban happy to take the free kick. Asenovic with a free kick. Devil Shuka. Shuka through. It's good night and thank you. Devil Shuka has done it. Croatia now can celebrate in some style. The Germans have been defeated. And Devil Schuker scores his fourth World Cup goal. And Germany know that they are beaten. Not bad for a player who doesn't know where he's playing his club football next season. What sweet revenge for Croatia. Shuka. Ah, the Croatians are taunting the Germans with cries of our feeder Zane, our feeder Zane, and it is our feeder Zane for Germany. appearing on the World Cup stage for the final time. Croatia, of course, have two matches still to play now in this World Cup, even if they lose the semi-finals. They would be involved in the third and fourth place playoff in the Parc des Princes next Saturday. has exacted another foul out of Germany who look a bewildered and beaten side 
who could have guessed a scoreline of 3-0 and Shuka's goal makes it 3-0 and the game swung on that controversial incident at the end of the first half when Christian Verns was sent off and from then on Croatia have had things just about all their own way a late consolation now for Germany because that's all it would be two minutes to go Mateus unable to sign off his final World Cup with a goal but he wasn't too far away was he a goal kick and if Croatia show this sort of determination and so much self-belief who knows they might overcome France in the semi-final and incredibly go all the way to the World Cup final and if there's a difference between the two teams tonight you do feel that Germany have been cracked open by the sort of rows that have beset the team the difficulties involved between Lothar Matthäus and Jürgen Klinsmann and Klinsmann and Bierhoff against Andy Muller. Been so many rows and upsets in the German camp. And yet Croatia have pulled together as one unit. Three minutes of stoppage time to be added on from now. It matters little. There's only one winner of this game. And that red checkerboard will be much in evidence in the city centre of Lyon tonight. Bierhoff unable to add to the goals he scored in France 98. The Croatian supporters were dancing in the fountains of central Lyon four or five hours before the kickoff I think we'll be heading back there stripped to the waist they sang nationalistic songs hugged each other many felt this was their World Cup final today when they were to meet the Germans but Neville Schuka with that sly wink knows there's more fun and games left than this Croatian story yet. Schuker again. And he's come close to another goal. German fans are leaving in their hundreds. They know the World Cup is over. And all that is left now for Croatia tonight is huge, huge celebration and that mouth-watering prospect of meeting the host France on Wednesday in the start of France. This is Bierhoff, that's a corner. Boti Vokes, no doubt, will have to contemplate his future. Another quarter-final defeat at the World Cup for Germany. Four years ago it was Bulgaria, now it's Croatia. Jeremies. Only a matter of seconds left. 
as Devil Shuka goes looking for the ball. And there could be another goal here. There is going to be another goal. No, there isn't. It would have mattered little. The Germans want to hear the final whistle as much as the, as the Croatians now. They're ready for a big celebration. We've played the regulation three minutes of stoppage time. Croatia go to the World Cup semi-finals. It's not just a victory, it's a statement of national pride. What a night for Croatia. What a night will be had in Zagreb. They've not only beaten Germany, they've taken them apart after Christian Werns was sent off. Robert Jani gave Croatia the lead. Goran Vlavic made it two, ten minutes from full time. And Devo Šuka put his signature on the bottom. They march on Paris next and take on the host France. Leon belongs to Croatia. We have new World Cup semi-finalists. Germany go out again at the quarter-final stage, but Croatia have revenge for two years ago when they were beaten in the European Championship quarter-finals. The national team was only reformed eight years ago after Croatia split from Yugoslavia, and so much has been achieved in that time. Their first World Cup semi-final at their first attempt, and their first win against Germany in five attempts. Germany's World Cup dreams are shattered. The final score here, Germany nil, Croatia three. Thanks, Gary Bloom at the Stade Jolon in Lyon. Not great football in the first half. Plenty of history in the second half, Andy Harper. We believe that's Germany's biggest World Cup defeat in 30 years since the 1958 World Cup. And, of course, Croatia are writing history by the minute. Yeah, Germany disposed of again by their East European foes. Four years ago it was Bulgaria. This time round it's uh, the Croatians. But let's focus on the positives. I mean, this is a, a performance and, and, and a success rate by a debutante national side that won't be bettered in a hurry. I mean, a uh, semi-final place with a chance of going through mm. to the final, a real chance of going through to the final. And it, it'll be a long time, if ever, that record before that record is broken. Andy, I'm sure there are plenty of our uh, Croatian viewers, I know all across Australia, who love to see this again. These are the two second-half goals which really put the cream on the cake. Yeah, the goals were well, I mean, a beautiful strike from Vlavic here. That's, uh, that's perfect. And they did, didn't alter the way they played, the Croatians. They, they absorbed as much pressure as they could and, and certainly stung the Germans on the break. And I think uh, the, the platform for the success lies with, in the hands, literally, of goalkeeper Ladic. The save off Bierhoff when the score was only 1-0 from that corner. Uh, and his generally, general command of his penalty area, I think, was the platform which enabled the Croatians to ping the Germans on the break. And uh, they did ever so well. I mean, there, there are a few better sides on the break than the Croatians, and they love the space that's afforded to them when they can catch a side off balance, which is going forward. And, and Shuka, uh, double Shuka, great striker that he is, really had everyone's heart in their mouths. One nil, he had a chance to ram a ball home on the near post for two nil and kill the contest about 20 minutes earlier than Vlavic yeah. ended up doing so. But tremendous result for Croatia. Uh, everything will be said about the history of tonight, but I'm sure a denser park in Sydney and sunshine in Victoria have erupted as we speak. Among two places where there'll be plenty of few, uh, partying sure. going on. Mm -hmm. Andy, let's now take a check of the semi-final lineups at the France 98 World Cup. It's now confirmed. We started with 32 teams. We're down to just four. Brazil, the current world champions, against Holland twice World Cup runners-up. That game is in Marseille on Tuesday. Then France, the host nation, looking to get into their first ever World Cup final against Croatia. Same applies to them, looking to get to their first World Cup final. That is on Wednesday night in Paris, just north of here, Saint-Denis. So uh, I'm sure the first three names, Holland, Brazil, France, would have been in most people's tips 
but not Croatia, I don't think, and, unless the diehards put them up there. Well, we were looking for a surprise packet, and, and they've provided it, although it must be said, uh, Germany with 10 men, obviously not the same force as they are with 11, but congratulations to Croatia. They've been the red herring that everyone's been waiting for, and now they're there with a very real say in how the tournament uh, will be decided. But of those four nations who are left, three of them have never won before, and if Brazil can get knocked off in the semi-final, which is a lot to ask, then we will have a new uh, World Cup champion, and... and uh, on a little side note as well, Lotto, the only non-major manufacturer left. I remember they yeah. added Asin Nike and Lotto flying the flag. Oh, I'm sure Adrian De Witt from Lotto in Melbourne, I know, would be ecstatic at the moment, even though he's a Dutchman himself. I don't know who, <laughs> who he's going to be barracking for, but we'll see about that. Andy, thanks again for your thanks, company Carl. tonight. OK, the France 98 World Cup actually takes a breather for the next two days, coming back to life on Tuesday for the first semi-final. That's Holland versus Brazil in Marseille. And, of course, then on Wednesday, France versus Germany in Saint-Denis. But please check your local guides for that big game, Holland versus Brazil. A game good enough to be the, uh, the final itself. France, Croatia, Holland, Brazil, that lineup. OK, for now, on behalf of the team here in Paris, we've had another big, long, busy day at the World Cup. Goodbye. France 98, the World Cup, brought to you by Sony Stamina Handicam, Westpac, Qantas, Toyota, Optus and McDonald's.